Oh, here's the offending box that caused me to uh, break the case on that thing. And actually, it wasn't the side that broke out. What happened was it had these cardboard handle cutouts here on the side here to lift the box. And like an idiot, I tried lifting it by that, and it ripped right out of my hands and dropped about a foot. And uh, the, uh, the the case that broke was in the in the bottom, so that hit the floor hard. So it didn't get marred up because it didn't hit the cement floor. The cardboard saved it from that, but it just broke it. So, all right. So um, the entire contents of this box I got for 50 bucks. This was all stuff I passed on the first time I was there. And when I went back, I just put together a pile because I knew he was looking to unload this stuff. And again, he hadn't gotten a lot of other response. I guess the guy who came on Sunday, came by on Sunday the Sunday after I had been there the first time, I guess all he did was buy a few indicators and a couple of micrometers. Uh, so let's go take a look at what's in here. All right, let's take a quick look at this first batch of stuff here. <clears throat> These are the last of the micrometers I bought from him. <clears throat> the only micrometers I left behind were either no-name micrometers. I got a frog in my throat. Oh, my. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, and then uh, he had uh, some minotoils that were left, but they were all metric micrometers. And I have a couple of metric micrometers now, I think. And then I also have my digital micrometer, my mitotoyo, which, uh, you know, you can switch over to metric mode. So for the few times that I'm going to need metric, um, I don't need a lot of those. Uh, probably already have one this size, but this is a 6 to 7 inch. This probably originally was in a nice case maybe with a whole set and it became an orphan but um, seems like it's a pretty good shape uh, it's got the carbide tips on it uh, so I grabbed that figure that's worth 10 bucks anyways and then I picked up these three right here these three look like they may have also been part of a set originally um, but not the same set that that one was in I don't think because these all have the soft touch clicks on them. Um, again, these all have carbide tipped anvils. Uh, these actually have part numbers on them. This is a 436-2. This is a 1 to 2 inch. And actually there's two of those. <laughs> so that's interesting. And I just noticed the, th the handle style is different on these two. This has got the wider knurled area. This has got the narrow knurled area here, but that allows them to put the uh, conversion, decimal conversion chart right on there, which is kind of neat. And then this one here is more like this first one, so these two might have been part of a set at one point. This is a 436-3. So you get a 1 to 2 inch and a 2 to 3 inch here, and then I get this extra 1 to 2 inch. Even at 5 bucks a piece, that's 25 bucks right there. He had some general tool items here. This is a general tool number S-94 pin vise set. So I like this because I've got quite a few different pin vices, but I don't believe I have a complete full set. So I'm probably going to keep that for myself. Um, you know, we'll say five bucks on that. I always lose track of where I am price-wise. See, that's $30. $30. And uh, here's a general number 435B radius gauge set. I've got a couple of radius gauge sets now. I think I've got a couple of Starrett ones, and I think I've got a Lufkin one, and now I have this general one. Um, looks complete, which is nice, and in excellent shape. I don't know, I'll say uh, 10 bucks on that. That gets us up to 40. He had these boxes of inserts. I don't even know if I have any holders or anything that I can use these in, but I just, you know, figured he wasn't going to want much for them, so I threw them in. Uh, these are VP8515 carbide, valinite carbide turning insert. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the number you guys figure this stuff out. This is a CN. That's a Charlie November MG Michael Golf 43 oh, 433 
M4. Okay. And these are Sandvik, the skinny, the skinny diamond ones. There's one triangle insert in there for some reason. Victor November Mike Golf. Looks like 160408 Mike Foxtrot. But then there's another number right before, below it, VNMG332 Michael Foxtrot. So, and this is 2015. I don't know if that's the year that these were made. And we got, this looks like just more of these, probably. A couple more, maybe. CNMG, and I believe this is the same. 120412s? Yeah. 433s, yeah. So. All right. So... Probably get ten dollars worth of carbide inserts right there. I think that brings us to the fifty bucks. So the rest of what's in the box here and this stuff here is basically freebies, even though I got that stuff at a really great price. So first up, we got a best test indicator box, which does have a best test in it. I had actually even forgotten I bought this. This is a model seventy thirty two dash five. This is a tenths, thousandths, best test indicator. And it appears to be in good working order. And it has the three different size little mounts there, which is nice. And it's even got the little adjustment key, or whatever you want to call this little doohickey, which I think that goes missing a lot. So that's a sweet little indicator there. The star at box looks like it was a box for a last word indicator at one point in its life. And it was just loaded with, well, there's the last word indicator, which, believe it or not, actually still works, even though it's thrown in here like a piece of garbage. Okay. And then just miscellaneous fixings and rods. And obviously not all of this stuff belongs in here. Although there's the... Alright, there's the... Oh, things are looking up already. If it wasn't for the insert missing in this case, there might be quite a... Quite a bit of what's supposed to be in this kit in here, and then some extras. Here's a little Sears Craftsman 14-piece standard tap set. Okay. That's a nice little set to just throw in a small toolbox when you're making when you're putting together a an emergency kit to keep in your your vehicle or something like that i might i might end up just throwing that in with uh the toolbox for my camper here's a little uh little tin for uh some sugarless cough drops or something along the line but you can see somebody wrote taps on there and sure enough that's what's in there whole bunch of taps. This one says Yugoslavia on it. This one I can't see anything on. Well, taps. Here's a quarter inch punch. It's the only punch I came across in his collection there. Uh, warning way of safety goggles. This has got a, it says quarter inch. Uh, it's got some kind of part number on it. And then it says Proto, P-R-O-T-O, uh, Professional uh, USA. So that's actually probably a pretty good quality uh, punch. So... Always on the lookout for those style of punches. I'm going to have a mixed manufactured set of those eventually. A lonely little V-block. Uh, this is an LS Starrett. Uh, it's quarter dash 20 coarse threads on the holes. And this says G727. So I don't know if these ever came as singles. I, I thought that these are supposed to come as a pair with a rod that actually can connect the two. So uh, I, that was a lone V-block just sitting in there. Figured, hey, no sense in leaving that behind. There's a little Mitotoyo. What do we got in here? This is a Mitotoyo 3 to 4 inch. Well, he's got depth mic on here, but I think this is an inside micrometer. It's funny, I can't find any part numbers on here. It just says 3 to 4 inch, 0 .001, made in Japan, Mitotoyo. But uh, that's an inside micrometer, 3 to 4 inch. So instead of a set, it's just a lone 
mic with uh, adjustment wrenches still in the plastic, never used by the looks of it. The uh, micrometer looks like it's been used, I meant the wrenches. And this nice little wooden box. I have no idea what that would be valued at, but uh, it went with the lot, so. Then I went through all of the boxes that he had and all of the drawers on the toolbox and I uh, collected up every standard that I could find. And uh, those were included in this lot. So this is a Minotaurial 5 inch and it's still got the Cosmoline or whatever on it there. So it doesn't look like that's ever been used. It's either brand new, never used, or came back from inspection or whatever and wasn't used since then. These, uh, this one here is a Metatoyo number 167-148, 8 inch. Here's one that's just marked 7 inch, and there's something stamped in the rubber there. I can't quite make out what it says. This is a Sterrett 7 inch. It's a Sterrett 7 inch. This is a Metatoyo 6 inch, 167-146. And we got these little itty bitty ones here. Here's a two inch, no maker. Here's a one inch, no maker. And here's a two inch, no maker. These look like the style that would come in the box with the micrometer. So if I have any micrometers in cases that are missing standards, I can throw these in there. So while we're on the subject of standards, initially he wanted to sell me these kind of expensive. But then when I went back the following week, I was able to get pretty much all of them in this $50 lot, which you can now see that, you know, I'm, I'm way into all the free stuff here. So what these are, the way he explained it to me, is these are... Um, high high precision standards so this one's marked two inch so what's in here is this thing that <laughs> when I first saw them I thought they were inside micrometers or something but and what this is is this is a uh, this is a Sterrett two inch uh, standard and uh, there's a, a, a a measurement on here and then there's a, a number 41488 so I don't know if that's like from the inspection that was done or what but this says 2.00001 inch so this is uh let's see tenths hundredths thousands ten thousandths this is one one hundred thousandth over two inches so um, I guess if you really want to set something with a really high degree of accuracy, you would use one of these really high accuracy standards. Um, I haven't looked these up yet. I, I, I shudder to think how much these were new. But there's a 2 inch. First I thought this was empty because it was so light, but it turns out what's in here is a little tiny itty bitty one and this is a one point zero 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 three here's a three inch same style this one let's see does this one yeah see no part number on that one either this box says end mesh mesh RD without rub. This box says that it's a 234A-5. Stare it. Um, stare it end measuring rod. That's just more of a traditional standard, I think, there. 9-5-00, I think that's probably the date that it was inspected on. So back in 2000, this was a 5.00004 inch. 
when you get that many places to the right of the decimal point, I would imagine you probably have to do this kind of measurement in a temperature controlled room. So I'm not going to take every one of these out, but you get the gist of it. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these things that I will probably never ever use. So I think I'm going to probably see if there's a market for these puppies and send them on to somebody who's doing a lot higher accuracy, degree of accuracy work than I am. All right, so this little tray full of stuff here is what's left. Let's take a quick look. Got one little uh, T-handled Allen wrench, one pair of needleless pliers that look like they were in excellent shape and are look to be well made. Even though I don't see a maker on these, I like that they're almost a needle point. Here's a number 998, number eight, high speed, plain type drill and countersink. Oh, that's a oh, that's a big one. Okay. Nice big countersink. Um, GP-X valve action pigmented opaque ink. This is some sort of a marker. Diagraph. Oh yeah. Thanks. A little homemade tailpiece. That looks like a tailpiece for a um, center. So somewhere there's a center missing its tailpiece. Countersink. This looks like it might be, you know, that's just a, uh, that's a spring-loaded center finder. All right, put that in a collet. And then uh, use this to uh, come right down onto a punch mark to line up to drill a hole. That's what I would use that for anyways. Another one of these, showed you one of these in the last haul. So I decided since I was going back there and no sense in leaving it behind. This one's marked Made in the USA. Okay, so I can, I think these are worth about 10 bucks can sell that one since I already have one. There's some tool bits, high speed steel tool bits for a lathe. Parting blade. Craftsman jobber's drill gauge. And then all that's left in the box here is uh, several taps. Uh, a couple more used counters. Uh, center drills. There's a little itty bitty punch that with my love punches and then uh, these I think these are weld on brand um, countersinks the style here I had looked these up once before because the the hole through them and everything intrigued me and I think this is for soft material if I'm not mistaken countersinks but anyways so that's it that's a wrap so until next time take care everybody I mean, to the, when you get to that many des, decimal positions. <laughs>